Okay, now the second exponential law says the following. Okay, it says when two same bases appear in a fraction, appear in a fraction. In other words, they are being, the one is dividing the other one. So we have a base divided by the other base. Okay, same basis, so it's important. Appear in a fraction, then the denominators, denominators exponent gets subtracted subtracted from the numerators from the numerators okay from the numerators exponent okay that is what it would be like in words so here we have m as the numerators exponent n is the denominators exponent and what we are saying is that if you have this you can write it as a single base with m minus n that is law 2 let's look at that one's proof and again it's really very simple all we use is this idea that b to the power of m actually means let me write it out b to the power of m actually means b times b times and this goes on for m times okay so here is m m times okay and then in the denominator we have b times b times and there we go this time since it's b to the power of n this is n times n times okay so now since we see that we have factors in the numerators no pluses and minuses so it's not a term it's a single term and a single term in the denominator then we learned before that we can cancel common factors not really canceling they divide into each other we divide above with a b and at the bottom with a b at the same time okay above with a b at the bottom with a b now i don't know how many there might be in between here because we don't know how many m is or n is but we know that um if there's one above and there's one at the bottom they will cancel out so how many b's will we have left well let's imagine that m is greater than n in other words there's more b's in the numerator than there is in the denominator then in the end what will we have in the end we will have at the top we would or, or all of the b's at the bottom would cancel with the b's at the top because there's for every b at the bottom there's at least a b at the top but there's more b's at the top so how many b's will be left in the numerator in the denominator all of them would cancel and they would only be a one factor left in the numerator there was m but n of them were cancelled so now there's left m minus n in the numerator so i suppose i should have written that out but this is sufficient as well okay so there's there's that one that is if there's more in the numerator than in the denominator okay what if there was more in so let's have another look what if we had that m was less than n then obviously our step would have been that n only one would have been left in the numerator how many would have been left in the denominator well there was n but all of the m's were cancelled or m b's were cancelled that's what i mean m b's were cancelled so m gets subtracted from the number that they used to be in the bottom so this is what they used to be now this is different to that isn't it well actually it isn't why not remember what we said is that we can swap this around 
we can make this be n minus m over 1. In other words, the reciprocal or the multiplicative inverse. If all we do is we change the exponent. Okay. Now this exponent just uh, that's actually a law that comes in later that should be m it's a law that you'll learn soon is that uh, that exponent can be multiplied to that exponent and this exponent can be mul as long as it's multiplied to that and these okay so it does come in a little bit later I'm sorry that I'm showing it to you now but that negative multiplies here to give me this because it's over 1 we can just leave it out anyways so this becomes b to the power of negative n and negative times positive m that's the negative multiplying those exponents okay so this just rewriting that that is still m minus n okay so that makes quite a bit of sense so let's do a few examples